Right now, it's time to talk to the man of the hour, talking about our guy, Miles Brennan, the man who continues to rebuff the Purtles' advances and has decided to cast his lot once more with the purple and gold. Miles, what's up, dude? Thank you so much for waking up this morning. Man, what's up? I uh, I appreciate it. Thank y'all for having me on. Uh, so, so, start emotionally, mentally. Where's your head at after the last few months? Man, it uh, it's been it's it's a lot better now. Um, I would say, you know, a couple weeks after I entered my name in the transfer portal, um, things got crazy, things got hectic, um, and I kind of let things play out. You know, I didn't rush into anything. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was like, man, I, I probably should start narrowing down some options and, and you know, figuring this out. I mean, I, I kept seeing more and more people enter the portal. Uh, especially quarterbacks. I knew that spots were going to start, you know, being taken quick. Um, and then out of the blue uh, on Monday, Coach Kelly called me, and that's how LSU got back into the mix. So uh, I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders, and I can take a deep breath now. And it's a place that I've always wanted to be, and I didn't want to leave. Um, and I, uh, I'm excited for the upbringing of this program and, and to do great things here. So, uh, Miles, that's what's kind of funny about the timing of all of this so you're saying that y'all talked monday for the first time and that's when y'all both were like okay let's you know let's let's do this thing so when you posted the picture of you on your instagram story in lsu uniform last week and the world went a little crazy this actually wasn't in the cards yet <laughs> no that was uh that was a picture i was going through my camera roll because i had sixteen thousand pictures so i have to delete some every now and then um, and I was going through and I found it and I was like, man, I didn't even know I had this picture on my phone. It's kind of cool. You know, it's all blurred out and it's just like a little circle in there with me throwing the ball. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to throw this on the gram. Not even thinking twice about it. Sure enough, I wake up the next morning and it's like absolute chaos. Um, but yeah, that had nothing to do with, uh, with what was to come. So I thought that was pretty, pretty funny. Now looking back on it, that, that all worked out like that. Well, and obviously, Max, I mean, even though you did put yourself into the transfer portal, like I know that was even a very difficult decision for you because of the love you have for LSU. And like you didn't really want to go anywhere, but you were trying to weigh the best options for you. So like, what was that process leading up to that moment when you did put your name into the transfer portal? Because obviously, like I said, like you and I have had conversations, like I know what this place means to you. But, you know, what was that decision kind of making that final decision to put your name in the portal? Yeah, so it really boiled down to, um, I you know, I have one year left, and I felt like I needed to be in a situation um, and an opportunity to where I can get out on the field, uh, play a full season, um, you know, showcase my talents, my abilities, and do everything I can to help a team win as many games as possible and ultimately show the next level that I'm ready to play. Um, you know, and, and my ultimate dream is to get to the next level. Um, but I felt like I needed to be in a in a situation that I could that I felt comfortable that I could do that at. And at the time, I, LSU was not a situation that I thought would best fit you know my, me and, and this opportunity moving forward with one year left. And so that's why I went forward with the transfer portal uh, to weigh all my options, and I narrowed it down to a few schools. And then you know, I, like I said, out of the blue, it just it, it all came full circle and. Uh, you know, I know that the the Lord works in mysterious ways, and I uh, I'm not going to second guess Him. So, so Miles, what do you do now? Like, what do you do now that that this decision has been made? Like, obviously, like you hadn't really ever left the building. I mean, I, I've seen you across the street. I've seen you in the building. So, like now, what's the process? Like, where are you kind of at in your rehab, getting back? I know that's something that you were doing daily. So, are you still going into the building and trying to get back healthy? Like, are you at a hundred percent right now from your injury in the off season? I would say I'm pretty close to 100. percent Yeah, um, you know I've been working out since my since my transfer portal announcement. I've been you know working out, uh, conditioning and throwing, and that's really that I've all been I've all focused on uh, the past couple of weeks. Obviously trying to figure out where I'm going to end up, but um, making sure that that's a priority as well. Um, and so now moving forward, um, Coach Kelly and I talked, and I'm going to return uh, in January with the team. Um, and I wanted to do that because I wanted I wanted to come back on a fresh start with him and his new staff and his own team. Um, you know, I know a lot of people wanted me to play in the bowl game, but when you think about it, 
I haven't practiced or played all year. And yeah. To yeah. try and get my body ready mentally, physically to go and play a game January 4th in Texas for one game, you know, for us to possibly go seven and six, you know, just, uh, I, I personally think I have too much ahead of me. I know I have too much ahead of me to risk anything for that one game. Well, and, and I mean, uh, we, we, we talked about it a bit earlier, but I think it's like you said, right. You, then you go forward with the new staff and, 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 and take me to the kind of vision, like, like what did coach Kelly lay out when you talked on Monday that made you feel like, okay, this is, you know what, this is where I want to be. Yeah. So one of the questions I asked him obviously was, you know, well, what's the offensive philosophy, what's your mindset, your scheme? Um, obviously you don't have an offensive coordinator hired yet, but like, what are you, what are you thinking? And he pretty much told me, like, look, this is my offense. This is my, um, you know, I, I'm coaching it. Um, I'm in the quarterback room every day with the quarterback. Um, and he pretty much just said, look, I've been doing this for 30 plus years. I can do anything that we need to do to win the game. Uh, he said, I really, um, I, I based it a lot of around personnel and who we have and the guys that we have and the quarterback and what the quarterback does best. Um, and the quarterback and I will have, you know, a really good relationship. And it'll be, what do you like? What do you don't like? And then, you know, we can bounce ideas off of each other. Um, he was like, and I, you know, I, I've done everything. And so that's really the limit. Uh, he was like, I just want to have a chance to, to see who we have at certain positions and, and see where we need to get some guys and, and then really start to build the foundation of the offense. Um, you know, and when he said that, it was just like, there's no limitations to this offense. They really kind of gave me a flashback to 2019, you know, where there was no limit yeah. to what we could do. It was like, look, if we got the guys to do X, Y, and Z, then we're going to do X, Y, and Z. And so I really thought that we could take that and run with it as an offense. So, Miles, do you have the conversations with some of the skilled players, like already, like now that you've made this decision, try to you know make sure that you are kind of on the same page. Obviously, you know, some of them have a bowl game, some of them have been injured, but like you're you're a guy that's you've been around them their entire time here. Like you're a veteran guy, so you've seen them come in. You have relationships with them already as you were getting ready to be the guy last year before you get injured there. So have you had any conversations with some of the receivers, running backs, tight ends? I have, yes. It actually, I went into the uh, to the building yesterday and I met with uh, Coach Jake Flint, the new strength coach, and uh, there was uh, some of the offensive guys were working out. And when I walked in with Coach Kelly, uh, you know, I kind of got the side eye from some of the guys, like, what the heck are you doing in here? Um, <laughs> and, you know, and they were coming up and giving me a hug, and then, like, it kind of broke you know, that I was coming back and it was overwhelmingly the amount of just support that I got from those guys as they're working out to stop their workout, to come over, you know, give me a handshake, give me a hug, tell them they're so excited, all that, uh, you know, and I, and coach Kelly was just right there. Um, and so I'm sure that that was, you know, warming for him to see as well. Uh, but yes, I've, I've talked to a bunch of the guys. I can't say how many people have FaceTimed me, called me. I went and saw in the training room, um, after it, you know, I made it public and it was nothing but excitement and positive energy um, and just reinforcing the guys that are kind of hesitant on what they should do that. Look, man, I mean, like you said, we we are the guys now and we came in together um, and we have a chance to finish this thing on a really strong note um, with a new staff, a new, you know, a new philosophy, a new standard. And, and let's just go do it. And so I think that I think I caught a lot of the guys attention that were kind of on the on the fence here and there. Miles Brennan, uh, well, actually, I got, I, I got one more for you then because cause we're, we're talking about some of the new and, and, and going forward. And one of the guys that you had a few weeks with but not a ton of time that has made um, – that that, 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 that that seems to have made a lot of headway, right, is Coach Brad Davis, the new O-line coach. I mean, right. great O-line recruits rolling in, just got the number one tackle transfer out of FIU yeah, yesterday. Sure. I want to give a shout-out. I want to get a shout out to Miles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I love yeah, it. The yeah. new cycle miles. was dominated by Miles yesterday. <laughs> but what, uh, what, what, what can you say about Coach Davis and why maybe, in your opinion, you think he's had so much success here early on? I think I think it speaks for himself. I think you know the type of coach he is um, is something that LSU has needed for a while. Uh, you know, he he has goals in mind and and he puts things for the players to be successful and the guys bought in, obviously they didn't have much time with him this year, you know, trying to learn his new his new uh, coaching techniques and things like that. But he's a Baton Rouge native. He's the interim head coach for the bowl game. 
He's, you know, reinstated for next year. We just signed the number one, you know, offensive lineman, the, you know, Miles to transfer. Like, he is doing the right thing. Um, and I think it speaks volume of himself and of what he does and of, 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 the, of, of the university. And, um, you know, I am super excited and pumped to be able to get a full year under him and just, you know, I mean, the sky's the limit and we can do anything together. And, and that's what we're looking forward to the most. Hell yeah. Miles Brennan back, baby. Like we said, loyal. Uh, congrats, Miles. It's awesome. It's all uh, kind of falling into place here. And uh, best of luck going into the new year, man. Awesome. Well, I appreciate it. I am fired up. And uh, let's go win a championship.